Happy Monday, everybody. Hello. Yeah. Uh, the 29th of August. Oh, but hello, everybody. We're going to start in just a few minutes with the Weird Things Podcast program. Hello, everybody. Yo. How's your Monday doing? August is almost over. The summer is in it? near upon us. Or the fall is near. The fall us. is, yeah. We're yeah, about fall to cross into Labor Day, and uh, we're, we're and in then... the middle of false fall. Before uh, is this false fall now? I think so. Because I think there might be two false falls normally. Is this false fall one or false fall two? Yeah, this is feeling like a Phantom Menace false fall. Yeah, the fall before the fall. The yeah, pride cometh before the fall. So this is pride. Yes. No, that was last pride. week. Oh, oh. Damn was last it! Week. Yeah, it the, was last week. They, they it had was the pride last week. Parade, yeah. and it wasn't even in the right month. And yeah, yeah. <sighs> what are we? Doing? <laughs> Can't do math. I told. Do I told what Bryce. That he was an idiot because it was the end of Pride Month, and then I went to Berlin and they had a Pride Parade, and I had to apologize to him, but I didn't do it in German. <laughs> I forgot. And then, and then it turned into Pride Parade here. And then so it was for, Pride. I know, like I should have sent him a brisket or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, hi, Andrew. Uh, ooh, uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah. I, I think you got cut off there. Oh, that's not great. Uh, are we coming no, in smooth? No, it's not great. Can you hear oh, us? Smooth like butter. We're coming like in buttery smooth. butter. Oh, cool. Uh, buttery butter. Buttering it up. Buttering up the butter. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Let's see. No drop frames. That's looking good. Hi, everybody. We're going to do some weird things here in just a minute. Everybody ready to go? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Andrew, I'll count you in. In three, two, Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hi. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. <laughs> I am the robot voice. <laughs> robot <laughs> voice, huh? Yeah, that's me. Replicated him. I'm a human. I am the robot voice of a producer. Yeah. That's my brother singing robot mm -hmm. voice. When you see a faded sign on the side <laughs> of the road, <laughs> it's robot voice. I'm a, if you watch Westworld, they have this thing when they try to like put a human consciousness into a robot. It doesn't work. They press a button and like flames come down from the wheel building, the, the, the ceiling. They just incinerate them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Oh, oh no! Uh, <laughs> my goodness, we don't have the budget. Because <laughs> otherwise, that would have been a great bit. That would have been. <laughs> Are you still watching Westworld, Maine? Uh, yeah. So I went, went, worked my way, went back to watch some season one, season two. Had a deeper appreciation watching season one and season two together instead of spread out over three years. Yeah. Uh, and because when you have too much time between episodes, you end up doing your own kind of theorizing and stuff. And you're like, what if it's this? And you're like, oh, OK, I guess it's about this. So then season three. I appreciated the theme of season three. The execution was a bit, you know, like the, so the story could have been. You know, my analogy was like when they did the uh, Falcon, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier series yeah. was and it showed like, you know, who was like the first super soldier and the idea that it was this, this black guy that was a victim of these experiments. And I'm like, I want that whole story. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, the I show. Want, like, like, yeah. 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 That, that, yeah. That to me, that's like that deep message there, you know, because showing people who feel they're righteous in that time and period doing bad things to me kind of is more of a relevant way for today. But anyhow, so that was, I think like, Oh, like yeah, this, why can't we've got that? Um, so season three, I think is a bit, you know, a bit about that. And then season four, I'm up to like episode five or six. And oh, it's... have you not finished season the, the, the most recent season four yet? No, oh. I have not. Okay. Brian yeah. was right about a lot of I have stuff. Thought... That's a review. I have thought. I, I, <laughs> I'm curious because yeah, like everything just sort of like you have this sort of time frame, like, well, I know who this is. I know who that is. And you're kind of like, okay. And then they revealed and like, Oh, you're like, yeah, no, that was pretty well broadcast. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I don't know if the surprises will have much payoff because you just are kind of like, kind you know, cause obvious. I'm at the point like mid, yeah, mid, midway in. Cause you're watching, you know, 
the you know what if the robots get to treat humans like this and they're going to be just extreme versions of us either much worse or much better and da 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 so anyhow we'll see can i anyhow, say this? I'm, not I'm, here to talk I'm over about- i'm over surprises in general in no my, more surprises. In my art. No, i just want you want to know what no more yeah. surprises L- how about you just tell a good story and no surprises at all <laughs> And it's I, a countdown to I, every every character's death on screen at all times. Sure. I'm gonna Let's give start you, there. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you two pitches. Yeah. One is the pretty cool Westworld, the early days of building Westworld, which would be super cool because you yep. got these robots. So what else are you doing with them? Yeah. My other is the early days of Jurassic Park. Love it. Oh, like sure. Like the first time they made a T-Rex, you know, like in some warehouse in San Diego. Like, you know, like before like, somebody has the idea of why don't we develop, why don't we genetically engineer a lysine dependency so that they can't, you know, just break out yeah. of the island and go nuts? Yeah. Everything up to, yeah, could, let's buy an island for this. <laughs> Everything before. Yeah, because you could do, yeah, because you could do, like, because remember in, like, the opening, like, the Velociraptor is, like, shipped in, you yeah. know, or they open it up, and you're like, oh, like, I guess it's, like, not Site B or whatever, but, like, there, now, there's a point where, like, I'm like, yeah, that could be. Like you said before, they figured out like Brian's pointed out all the safety controls and all this other stuff. And, yeah. Or we can make it even younger, and they're all infants, and they're just like imagine pop culture stories and tell them as for velociraptors and <laughs> they, pleosaurs. When they were growing up, they had their version of Jurassic Park, and it was called Dino. It was Dino Land, babies. and it would be on. Yeah. It would be on carts. It would be like, oh man, a land where dinosaurs are back alive again, and there's like adve- cartoon adventures going on there, and that so, inspires Jurassic Park. What? What we really should be talking about, though, is today the historic launch of the Artemis rocket. What oh a beautiful sight. Gosh, what Amazing a sight. Where yeah. were you? Where were you when they scrubbed that mission? Oh, I was, oh. In, my, so, I was in my kitchen oh, yeah. looking at Twitter. I was listening oh. to NPR, and they said, but if it had gone, where would it be now? <laughs> <laughs> and then they're all like, also... Why? <laughs> Which I thought was such a, a simultaneously brilliant and dumb question for an NPR investigator to be asking. Also, why? <laughs> well, well, but there is a very good why here because uh, this is a bit of a fiasco in my really? opinion. Really? In the re- yes, it's the, it's the real we'll Jurassic. So, part. so that, that my my. my... Uh, my sense on this was, and uh, uh, full disclosure, as I was doing the Patreon episode for PX3, I, I'll watch all the Sunday shows that happen, and uh, there was a lot of coverage of Artemis. I think two of the shows actually were like semi-live remote, uh, interviewing everybody with it. So obviously this was a big push by NASA that they wanted to make sure that this was a big, gigantic idea. But when I saw it was scrubbed today, I was like, well, that's... Them, them's the breaks when it comes to space travel, but but uh, more of a fiasco than than one might think, huh, man? So they've had the thing is they've had multiple wet dress rehearsals, and they could never get through one completely without a problem. The last wet dress rehearsal, which was at the limit of like, hey, if we can't pull it off here, we may have to sort of push launch to a year later or whatever. They like got it; they couldn't pass it. There was like a valve thing, but like, oh, we got this valve issue. What we're going to do, we're ready to go launch. Even though we never passed a wet dress rehearsal, we'll go to launch and we'll treat that as a wet dress rehearsal and then a launch. And what do we have? A similar kind of few a related sort of issue to the wet dress rehearsal. So they went to go launch. They're like, oh, we got it. We got it. Nope, they didn't have it. This was a thing that if they they've never made it through a complete wet dress rehearsal, wet dress rehearsal. And today. The failure was like, yeah, that was not a good plan. That was really not a good plan because now it got scrubbed and they're saying Friday, we're going to try Friday. I would be shocked if, you know, they weren't able to fade, be shocked they fade, off. fade that bet is what you're saying. If, if there's any off seas books that are taking action on whether or not Artemis will launch on Friday, then then hammer the no. Did they? Yeah. Did they just so they failed their pre-launch tests and and decided that they would not need to find a way to pass those tests before trying to launch they, they decided they got enough information to know they had enough information like, sounds like, 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 like it, it, wrong it, with that it, evaluation it, uh, uh buckle up for this as i understand it it failed in different ways each time so they figured yes. all they have to do is get started and 
this will be the one where <laughs> none of them, everything, the optimist in us wants to say, yes, it failed in a different way each time, which means each time each part went right. Uh, uh, also, though, isn't this kind of the pattern and behavior that led to really, really terrible, horrifying tragedies? Right. Like, like don't don't you it's want rocket science? Yeah. Don't you want everything? <laughs> isn't isn't space and rocket travel like a, a measure uh, 25 million times cut once. Well, well, and, and uh, to be clear, and, and Andrew, correct me if I've misinterpreted this, but uh, specifically what they don't want to do is have any one part of the structure uh, from a thermal point of view, view have too wide of a swing where all of a sudden it gets either very cold or very hot. Uh, and so they're trying to either, I forget whether it's pre-cool or pre-warm, but they wanted to get everything so it's like it's all all the same amount of loosey goosey and ready to go. And uh, they just couldn't get everything all temperature aligned. And so they were like, yeah, we're, we're going to try again. Yeah. So is, it, is, this a, is this a rocket problem? Oh. As opposed to. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, as opposed to an environmental problem. Yeah. Right. I mean, or, it's not like the weather. weather problem. Or, oh, this or... is a valve. Yeah. No, this okay. is like yeah, valve. Yeah, yeah. valves not behaving the way they're supposed to. Yeah. I, yeah. I just imagine like if these are fixable problems, they should be able to resolve them. the issues. Yeah. Who built who built this rocket? Uh, Larry. Larry, the rocket man. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I, I mean, this is this. Who didn't build this rocket? Remember, this is the Frankenstein <laughs> yes. rocket that is. This is this is me uh, leading you into explaining that yeah. for the audience. Yeah. So this was this was the offshoot of when we needed to have a replacement for the space shuttle. Uh, a plan was proposed, perhaps by the people who built the space shuttle, to say, why don't we use the same solid rocket boosters, the same engine, the same everything, but we'll get rid of that reusable part. <laughs> you know, that pesky reusable part. We'll just take all the expensive non-reusable parts and we're going to put that into a rocket system because it'll be cheaper because it's the same gang. If you know anything about sequels and bringing the cast back together, it's never cheaper. Um, and it's rife with problems and it gets very problematic. So this was like trying to do a friend season 10. Uh, and it's it's it was it was a dumb idea at the start. It was literally an idea. Basically, it's pork barrel politics to fund the different companies there that have pretty good lobbyists who wanted to push this thing for it's an embarrassment of how much money we spent on this. Uh, and it's, and I don't want to blame NASA because it, it, it is a, it is a, it is a problem with the structure of, Hey, we need to get these senators to vote for this. Well, these senators yeah. say, if you can't build this in my state, you're not going to get X and you have to compromise. We force NASA to make all these compromises to have to bend to the political will of the people who finance this stuff. And then we, you know, we blame, I mean, there's some, I think, some elements of NASA that make it worse. But again, you got super hard, you got super hard working people everywhere. Everybody who worked on this thing, my heart goes out to them because these people have worked hard. Maybe not some of the mid level bureaucrats and stuff that messed it up, but everybody else, yes. Uh, also, I do think it merits like uh, we live in the timeline where SpaceX uh, has highly successful reusable launches, uh, 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 Blue Origin is doing very well or whatever. There's another timeline where none of those paid off. They could never quite yeah. get them down. And uh, uh, we live in a timeline where we made it to the moon in eight years. Uh, correct, but uh, uh, at extraordinary expense, right? And so uh, if what you're trying to do is politically, salve the fact that we don't want to be dependent on Russian space program to go. I mean, at, at the very least, yes, it's a Frankenstein, but these are all familiar pieces and none of mm -hmm. them are, are, are experimental. Uh, we just got to engineeringly figure out how to do it. So, so I'm, I, I don't want to harp too hard on the decision to go forward and having this as a fallback, uh, I think has given NASA tremendous leverage with, uh, with SpaceX and and all of its contractors going forward. I I I I agree that like having you don't want to be completely dependent on one contractor, be it SpaceX or whoever. That's not a good place to be. And I get the idea of there being a wholly, in theory, government-owned spacecraft that although they can't, it's not really because it's you know so and so's engines and all this. I think that is a good way to hedge a bet. The problem is just as you know, it's just that. There was no stopgap to say, well, if this gets over this budget, we got to start over because clearly we're misaligned. And it just kept getting, you know, we're 
25 years into this program, but 25 years into trying to use this approach to do it, you think about that. You think about that it was how much 25 years of trying to stick to this idea of reusing or more of trying to reuse the shuttle stuff for this, which was a dumb idea at the beginning. And that's like, when do you say, no, maybe, maybe, maybe we need to maybe just scrap this approach and do a different approach to build like clean sheet, build our own internal rocket at NASA. NASA has a capability. NASA could be building Falcon nines or stuff. It would cost them three X or four X. They could do it. Yeah. Oh boy. But, so, but, but there is a massive expense of political capital to say out loud, we're starting again from scratch, which is part of the reason the Russians ironically in the late eighties refused to ever admit they had nothing resembling a functional uh, space shuttle, but they needed to keep up appearances less, uh, uh, less uh, the brinksmanship of the Cold War uh, 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 be fundamentally well, pivoted. The, the, the Buran, had they not collapsed, the Buran could have been a formidable thing flying today because the Buran did a lot of things right that they, they corrected for a lot of mistakes on the shuttle. And the Buran did do a test flight. So, you know, considering, you know, uh, There's some amazing engineers there. My 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 point is mainly that uh, there is a heavy heavy cost to saying the quiet parts out loud. So mm. if we're frustrated because they're not doing the obvious thing of announcing we we got Jack, we really should start from scratch. Um, I understand in the political sphere why many people would say, please don't do that. Please just yeah. keep keep on doing this. It uh, Over here, it looks like this might pay off. Over here, it looks like this may pay off. Or, heaven forbid, we may actually have to make this thing work. And, and you'd rather yeah, spend I, the money on this solution than say, we need to start from scratch. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and the challenge is that, that it, it, you know, as it, it creates kind of a Potemkin village of a space program and, like, if it wasn't for SpaceX right now, the world would be extremely limited by satellite capacity because what happened with Russia? And that's that's sort of the scary sort of thing is to think if it wasn't for SpaceX, we would be talking about scary national satellite capabilities and other stuff, our inability to do that, partially because so much money and resources have gone into this thing. It's just been such a disaster. At least the shuttle, the shuttle program, the shuttle could launch national defense satellites, all these sort of stuff. So... Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's hard. I get like yeah, it's like a lot of people inside NASA have been screaming saying this is a horrible program, whatever. But it's like yeah, it's the the politics of it is just frustrating. Does what does Artemis ever launch, Andrew? And if so, when? I if we were sane, we would have scrubbed this program ten years ago. But there's Brian points out about the political will that you know if if the unless there's a major sea change in politics and the politicians behind the scene and given who's currently head of NASA, I would not surprise me if we just throw even more money at it, give it a new name, call it something else, but it's going to be the same players and the same fiasco. But never actually complete the, this Artemis. I think we mission. might get a lot. I think we'll get it eventually. Eventually you will spend enough money to do it at a, at a cost of our national defense and our space ability to really go into space. You know, I think we'll, we'll lose. We're going to lose big by that. I stumbled across an old article from Smithsonian Magazine that I just, uh, m many people I'm certain have heard of all of this, and it makes sense. It's not rocket science, although it is. Uh, but but, <laughs> but just, just think about this. Uh, the world's, do you know the story of the world's first space ace? The first guy space to ace? get on a plane, it was an F-15, and it flew high enough that it was able to target an actual satellite. Oh, yeah, using, yeah, Javelin type style. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. And, and launch a two stage rocket from the plane and take out a satellite from an airplane. And, wow. uh, and, and uh, of course, at those velocities, there was no ordnance, there was nothing to explode, there was nothing to arm. It's just like all it's got to do is clip it and, yeah. we're, and you're done. That's I, I. It's remarkable. That's cool. Yeah, that's a thing that you can do. Uh, sounding rockets, they don't have to reach the point of escape velocity. It just has to intercept. So if you send something up, it doesn't have to go seventeen thousand miles an hour. It just has to go fast enough. Like you could you could send something over the moon and back to the Earth and never go reach escape velocity because it's not going to go fast enough to escape 
versus velocity. Uh, so yeah, that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I remember it's amazing. You think about that. Like the guy who gets to say, yeah, I, I did that. I took out a satellite. <laughs> wow. It's pretty dope. Uh, the, the, there was another article I stumbled across speculating on, uh, here on earth, we have the very large array of radio space telescopes, um, or ra- uh, radio telescopes. Uh, but the question was, uh, w- might we get far, far superior imaging than we do from the James Webb Space Telescope if we just kind of like, almost like an environmental decree, decide that the dark side of the moon is sacred and is only for radio telescopes so that you're totally shielded from all the noise from Earth and when the sun is behind you, suddenly you have a, a, a one-sixth, the one-third the size of the planet Earth size telescope uh, that gets uh, the most extraordinary images we could ever get. Uh, that sounds cool. I'd be down for that. Um, all yes, yes, and all of the above. Like I, we, you know, we we imagine the future is sort of a slightly bigger version of the present. But when you look at, imagine going back in time, thirty years, and showing people pictures of Shanghai and Dubai. Yeah. And when when people talk about like, oh, I don't know, that's the scale of that. It's just too ridiculous, or this, or whatever. It's like, you sure? Like, 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 you know, we're you know crossing the Bay Bridge. I'm like, imagine trying to explain this bridge to somebody three hundred years ago, two hundred years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the people live on it. Their villages here along the way, right? You know, like, no. Well, where do the horses get water? <laughs> you know, where do they drink? <laughs> you know. I mean, just thir- just thirty years ago, we couldn't explain what the three sea- seashells were for. Oh my God! Now we know. I'd feel so stupid if I didn't know. Yeah. Be a real ding dong. Yeah. The kind of idiot that wouldn't go to patreon.com slash weird things. Why at patreon.com slash weird things you can support this very program. Head on over there right now. Not only will you have the self satisfaction of supporting your favorite science program, you will also get after things earlier and have access to our subscriber only Discord channel. Why, friends, when you are a subscriber to patreon.com slash weird things, you can put your custom RSS feed in the podcaster of your choosing. No logging in. No remembering passwords. It's just that easy. Patreon.com slash weird things. And never forget the weird things pledge. We will never, ever fly an F-15 and shoot down a satellite. That's right. That ever. you own. The, yeah. That you own. That you own. That you own. Yeah, actually. Yeah. That, that you own doesn't include China. As long as you're <laughs> paid up today. <laughs> <laughs> Russia or allies. Uh, Weird things hey, reserve uh, the right to shoot down whatever satellite they want. Speaking of crazy people launching stuff, yeah, um, I'm a I'm a fan of an entrepreneur with a rocket company that likes to take big bets, do innovative stuff. You know, he has a bit of a funny accent mm-hmm. to my American ears, mm-hmm. but this guy seems pretty clever. On top of it, now he wants to launch something crazy into space. Like you, Procon, y'all heard that you heard about this. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, of course. The yes. what? Peter Beck of Rocket Lab. Yep. Big, big Beck so Rocket over here. Peter Beck. Rocket Lab is another really, I think they're a pretty cool space uh, technology company building. Their, they've got their own plan for reusability. They've been putting stuff into orbit. Peter Beck seems like a pretty thoughtful uh, leader of the company. And we've showed before the plan they have for one of the big rockets where he was like sitting inside of the shell eating his hat because he's like, oh, we were never going to go do this approach. He's like, guess what? We're doing this approach. So I'm going to eat my hat. They've got a project they want to do. They've built their own thing called, I think, Photon, which is basically a system that can be sent to inter- other planets. And they are self-funding their own mission to the clouds of Venus to look for signs of life. Uh now, are, are, are they going to try to blimp it up, or are they just going to send in probes no, and see no, what they fall, can get? fall, fall, fall. Yeah, yeah not, not overcomplicated. Just a probe that goes into there. They're working with some, I think, group at MIT that's got a very unique idea, uh, idea for, like, basically a laser to scan the cloud vapors for signs of what could be life. Because there is what's interesting about Venus is they found phosphines, which, as far as we understand it, phosphines on Earth are generally created by 
biological life forms. Venus is a very weird melting pot of chemical reactions going all the time. So God knows what it's cooking up. Like you can have oceans of silly putty there for all I know. Um, that is not technically accurate, but anyhow, hmm. the, they want to do an experiment to say if there's life there it would probably have to be in the clouds. And so maybe we can see that. So that's their plan is they're sending the photon into Venus. And like, this is like legit, like launch windows next year. Damn. Wow. So this is going to happen. What happens if I, we I do give find it a high probability? What what what, are, are, uh, what launches first, Artemis or this? <laughs> what does a meaningful science experiment first? This or Artemis? Yeah. I mean, I think Artemis is gonna launch. Let me make that very clear. Before I this or total, after this? I think before this, I think that so many reputations are uh -huh. at stake mm -hmm. and so many people are there that like the the cost, the final bill to get it to launch. Uh, of course, you know, we could get like the human genome project. Remember when cellular genomics was on the path to beat the government effort to map the human genome and they declared a tie Yeah, and they both got to cut the ribbon at the same time. It's like, you know, there's, there is a non-zero probability, the SLS starship. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that will never happen, but that would be kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, so what, but, if, uh, if they do find signs of life in, in the clouds of Venus, <laughs> What, is, yeah. what, have, what well, next? Uh, uh, and are we just going to call them women? We <laughs> declare war. Uh, uh, keep, keep in mind, this isn't too far off. Uh, uh, Venus is about the same size as Earth, uh, same gravitational weight. Um, uh, most of our clouds, the droplets and uh, snowflakes begin to nucleate around bacteria that are just sort of floating on the surface out there. So between the, the ice cold of space and the, the melting face death of, of Venus, there has to be a, a Goldilocks zone. So I, 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 there's no, technically there's no reason that we shouldn't expect to find something. Yeah, I, it, it's, you know, we've, we found since we've been finding this extreme files on earth, the, the, the one limitation I would say is that there's some theories that like life may have originated inside volcanic vents that the most more extreme environments may have actually been where you got the life may have originated because of the amount of energy, the amount of chaos that you get that may create something that eventually you, it's like a very, very fast system to kind of try new combinations. So as far as the cloud, the thing with Venus be like, okay, where would life have started there? Could it have started in the upper atmosphere? And that's, you know, there's some ideas that that's where like organic molecules and earth form, which what is you, pretty can be demonstrated. What what what? Uh, let's say let's say there is life on in Venus, and we bring a sample back. What do you want? What do you want life on Venus to be able to do? Should should it like uh, scrub oil out of the ocean? Should it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 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 make hydrophobic coatings over. Like, Look at what? Colonizer Bryce already trying to about, enslave yeah. whatever not, not life is nothing. on Venus. Not, not to be like uh, uh, patronizing, but I'm like super impressed. I'm like, they grow up so fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> God, the he wants to subjugate, the subjugate them. Put them under Venusian his governor. Uh, so, so Venusian governor Christoph. Right, <laughs> I'm just, exactly. I'm just I, when they say breakthrough science is possible, I've come to liberate you, <laughs> says Bryce as well, he steps out of his Venetian well, ship. Hey, we we, let, let, we let, have zoos and farms. Let let's uh let's speculate wildly. Um, you know, uh uh uh, uh for example, if it's an extremophile that is able to tolerate extreme temperatures and, and bizarre conditions, mm. uh, keep in mind, like, you know, we came up with some kind of, you know, carbon, whatever tiles for our heat shields on reentry for all of our capsules. Uh, I believe it was Japan that just put wood on the bottom and just let the wood burn up and, and fall off. Uh, uh, it could be that coating a spaceship in, a particular type of Venusian algae or something might have unique properties that could maybe convert it into energy or dissipate heat or, or be more resilient. Uh, there's a lot of organics that are used for, you know, everything from, uh, I, I may be wandering out of my field here, but, you know, bulletproof materials, nano uh, fibers and so on. I yeah. mean, it's, it's the stuff we don't know, but, but I think you're exactly right, Bryce. It's, it's that, that's why you want to go find out, so you can poke around and find out. Yeah, maybe there's a one new fuel there. Maybe we replace. Maybe there's 
So or, I, or, or, or what if there's superconducting properties to it? And yeah. all of a sudden we have what if it organic rates Skittles? hybrid. <laughs> yeah. What if there are moths that taste like curly fries? So we got to look it, first. One of the two of the biggest developments in biotech was uh, CRISPR and Cas9, which was the discovery of bacteria that can repair their own genetic sequences. They have the little bit things that go up and down there and do that. Wow. In a hostile environment like that, could be, you know, was it Dianicus, whatever, I can't pronounce it, Radianus, which is the one they found in the nuclear pools, the one that like you just you scrape, you just rip apart its DNA and it reassembles itself. Oh, wow. And so, and if you have life in hostile environments, like, yeah, you, you might find some amazing little solutions they've come up with to do this. Although I'd argue that we're in the verge with computer science where we might be able to run really cool simulations to discover like things like that. But yeah, like we don't, you know, we don't know. It'd be cool. Like F look life on Venus. Yeah. Venusian, Ven, Ven, Venusian, Venusian living the likes of which you've never seen. But breeze now with Venus air open floor plan. <laughs> A conversation Literally, open pit. floor fan because there's no floor. <laughs> it's just gas. Yeah, gassing it up. Yeah. Gas McMansion. I uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Brian's got a thought. Oh no, no, no. Uh, 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 I think I think it was one of the episodes where uh, you were on assignment, but we were talking about uh, uh, lunar lava tubes came up in the news, and they were saying that there are sections that uh, all year long. Uh, there are pockets of the moon that stay at around 67 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, yeah. uh, all of a sudden, the moon got way more attractive because we'd previously discussed it. It's like, hey, what's the point of, you know, if you're going to get out of the gravity well, might as well go straight for Mars. And it's like, well, I don't know if we can actually have a little, you know, Manhattan-sized city on, on the moon. Why not there? And then, uh, I don't know, uh, Venus is back in play. Uh, uh is it is it Titan that's covered in, in methane? Uh yeah, yeah. Uh is is deadly deadly gas in considered in play? Uh or do we do we know how or what does in play mean? What are we Oh I, I mean as far as like uh in our lifetimes where we're going to get to see uh significant ex exploration, if not the beginnings of co uh, colonization. I mean, certainly in play, right? Yeah, you know, if we can get there, that's that's step one. And it feels like, aside from Artemis, we're pretty close to getting to a lot of places. <laughs> Got to get there and back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, by the way, if there's a if there's a movie, up, if they redo Deep Impact or Armageddon, I just want to see like this ragtag, all of the spaceships going up, and, and Artemis is like the um. Uh, 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 the Randy Quaid of the bunch. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to make it. I'm in space. That'd be good. So uh, totally unrelated to space now. I've got an interesting sort of story. Go. So I'm going to play a mystery. Uh, there are some divers in off the coast of Canada and anybody care in the Arctic Circle care to guess they're trying to do retrieval? Anybody care to guess what they're trying to retrieve? I mean, I would immediately I want to say some well-preserved woolly mammoth. Hopefully one so well-preserved we can cook it and eat it. Oh. Edible woolly mammoth. I'm going to say. ultimate edible. <laughs> and of I... course it has to be in Canada where they're legal. Yeah. Especially up there. I don't care. Yeah. Up in Canada. In the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Lawless. You know what Ar they say? What's that? Uh, if you're having an edible in the Arctic Circle, uh -huh. yeah. you better uh, get ready for a you long work. day because the sun's out all day. I Made yourself into a corner with Circle, huh? Yeah. yeah, sorry, when, yeah. Not too many things rhyme that with one, Circle. Put that yeah. one on a tea towel. Uh <laughs> All right, so cross stitch it. <laughs> I'm gonna say a submarine. Oh, that's a good one because you know it's dangerous, know. treacherous. Russia sends crazy. And, and I, 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 the news is it's, it's, it, this is successful as of just a couple hours ago. Oh, I wow. the story a couple of days ago. Oh. They were a success. Maybe yeah. uh, uh, a diving team. So it's underwater, 
maybe a plane, maybe like a a a, pl- a plane. I'm gonna say crashed. Like a plane. A, a little, a little, a little. Uh, not a plane. A, 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 no. Amelia Earhart action. Yeah. Like yeah, Bryce. Plane. Dumb. Oh. A dumb idea, idiot. Oh, okay. Dumb. <laughs> nope. 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 Uh, they're pulling it out there because it doesn't belong there. Oh, because it doesn't belong there. Mm. Asteroid. Mm. Uh, nope. There is another mission we could talk about, but this is. Uh, you ready for this? Let's go. Ready. Summer wear. Summer wear. <laughs> A Ford F-150. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait. Spoiler alert. They're getting it just for the catalytic converter. <laughs> yeah, so they yeah. can buy some meth. They are meth heads. <laughs> some, some Alaskan meth heads hurt. No. So there is this thing called the the uh, uh, the Trans Global Car Expedition, and they were sending this Ford F-150. It's like super kitted out. It's sort of like a to go map out the course or whatever to do it <laughs> Look and at then thing. it broke through the ice and sank. no and like like yeah we gotta pull this out because this is a very special ecosystem so they like, managed to rescue it wow when you want a truck <laughs> you need to get it out ford f-150 like a rock <laughs> tough it enough to sink to into the, the arctic the circle <laughs> Yeah, so uh, nobody was hurt wow. when it sank. Um, Good. But, yeah, uh, so that's a thing that can happen. You safe out there? <laughs> it's like a movie. Don't all movies teach us not to do this exact thing? <laughs> to- you need a real truck. I mean, I'm <laughs> talking ice cracking, gum flapping. You, you don't even need to go to the movies. Just go to, to, to the sports bar and watch the chive. They got, they got cars <laughs> driving on ice that fall in there all the time. <laughs> So here's, I'm going to read you the, the, this is a really neat, I think this is a cool expedition from what I'm reading about it. Uh, that's an expedition to kind of make their way around the world. Uh, and uh, trans global, I'm reading it to the, in order of press releases from the none of news, trans global car exhibition reaches resolute Bay, uh, talking to the novel, Tlognik peoples, uh, then, uh, Towering sea ice and a lost Ford truck. Team treks from Yellowknife to Resolute Bay. <laughs> like, literally, like, the press releases. And then uh, Rescue Operation press release. And so I think we'll get a new press release pretty soon that we've rescued it. But it's just sort of funny reading, hey, we're going to go explore the world. Oops, lost a truck. Uh, now we're <laughs> going to find it. Now we got it. All right, carry on. It'd be so great if it just started up. Oh, yeah. They just... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right, I'll drive back. See you guys. Hop on in the back. So if you go to transglobalcar.com and you go to the back, bottom, scroll to the bottom of the page, you can actually see the route they're taking, which I could see why it might be problematic. Well, let's see here. What in the recovery of the hay? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Good Lord. Now that is um around the world. Uh, they, uh, and it is starting from I guess they there are a couple of sensible parts where they put it on a boat. From the North Pole down to the South Pole, back up to Denmark. Wow. That's uh That's a lot of that's a lot of driving. Yeah, can you do is that okay? Well, I mean, obviously, it's it, it had some flaws considering they lost the truck and the and and, and the drink, and it, it looks like from where they began, it was uh, it was it was early in the uh, early in the process. Uh, I huh. it scroll down to see the the main team. Okay, yeah. Oh my! Wait, who's Vasily? This dude. <laughs> That's they a, find him in the ice. <laughs> they, they found him at the end, uh, right before the credits of the thing. <laughs> These, yeah, if you said, do you, if you're asking, like, if I had to choose from a list of what this team was doing, yes, uh, Arctic exploration to the far ends of the planet, 100%. Yeah. Um, Seems like that's like a big thing for them. You know what's weird is I thought it was rude for the NPR guy to ask why go to the moon, but I feel no hesitation saying, why? Why are you driving a truck across the North Pole? And why do you have that lack of hesitation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I'm asking you, Brian. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Where, fair yeah, enough. where, and hey, also, where, are you, where are you gonna, where are you gonna go to the bathroom, man? Welcome Larry to Brian's no, no new Substack. 
Yeah. Brian's new Substack called Huh. <laughs> Fur it or get it. The Brian Brushwood blog. So uh, they put some trucks around the world. Why? 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 Be sure to subscribe to my Substack. Think, think exactly. I'll see you later. No, no, we'll be back, okay. be back no, no, next no, 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 week. But like going yeah. to the moon, there are significant discoveries to be made about habitation, about living on the moon, about colonization oh, oh, of the we're stars. We're getting a two-paragraph Substack from Brian today. Uh, oh, oh my god! god. All right, no, look, I, you're right. I said too much. Subscribers only. <laughs> huh? Dot Substack dot huh? 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 Uh. Yeah, so I think it's cool. I mean, listen, yeah. driving around like that, teams, international teams, people coming together, I think that kind of stuff is really cool. And and kudos to them for, you know, pulling the truck out of the water, you know, because that had to be uh, expensive pack and big in, effort. Pack out, but bro. Re- yep, yep, respecting the ecosystem. I think that these things, uh, you know, what I love about our country is our national parks. And I think that is really as much as we fault ourselves for many things, as we should and be open minded, but we should also credit the fact that if you go look at a map and you look at how much area is designated state in natural park, it is a considerable amount. And we were a leader in doing that. Other parts of the world, even really developed parts of the world, they don't have as many private, don't have as many public lands like we do that are preserved like that. A lot of it's just all owned by somebody and you have to get permission to go there if you want to go fishing and do that, uh, which is one of the things that like a lot of my European friends love about America is that you want to go to our national parks, get licensed, go fish. You can do a lot of stuff, which is cool. And so preserving that, I think is, is great. Somebody in the chat said built fjord tough. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, that is a great logo. Uh, like some rocks next to a sea. I, I, I don't even buy that. That's the wrong brand. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, man, we stayed in the truck <laughs> <Bye-bye>. column. <laughs> uh, we have time for one more story? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, why not, man? So I want to get a... This, this might be some hot takes here. I'm very curious to see your opinion on this. Did we talk about the company story file? I don't think I so. I don't remember it. Mm-mm. So uh, what they do is... Let's say you're... Uh, you're reaching your your end. You're reaching the point in life where you're like, you know what? I don't have a whole lot more time on this planet. Mm-hmm. But man, people may have some questions for me. People may want to know things, and I might be able may not be able to answer them. So what they do is they sit you down, they put multiple video cameras on you, then they ask you hundreds of questions about different things, and then they create kind of a digital version of you. And then when you pass on, that's available. They did this with Ed Asner. And so at, at, at Asner's uh, memorial, boom, there's a video screen with Ed oh. Asner. That you, you can could... ask Ed Asner questions. Oh, wow. So you oh. could, it was it was uh, 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 on preset questions or was it like, like, like a natural language AI, like Siri kind of thing that was plugged in with that information? I don't know the the total details of it, but people could just sit there and ask questions. Fascinating! That is amazing. I'm gonna do that. Just would you like to do that right now? I would. Oh my dear! With William Shatner. Wait, what? Is he still alive? Well, he is, but he's also a part of. It's coming up. He's a part of the. the... Uh, Ask him. Should we go to Mars? Should we go to Mars? Ask a question. Let's see. Is he gonna speak? So I have been interested as a result of playing Captain Kirk in Star Trek. Uh, I was actually interested in science fiction and uh, all the possibilities, the potential of science fiction before Star Trek. But Star Trek uh, and its popularity and people asking me, what do I read? And So I read a lot of science fiction and started to write science fiction. I met Eric Von Daniken, who has promoted this idea that aliens have come to Earth and helped mankind with all these projects that that have no explanation. There are huge rocks and... And I think this, <laughs> this, I think this is more literal. This is shockingly like actually talking to William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most authentic representation. <laughs> I think I think they asked him a lot of questions about being on TV, not a lot about space. 
<laughs> it looked cool. It. They, well, no. Let's let, let's let's ask him something that would be that would be more like at a memorial. Like like, uh, what is your greatest memory? What maybe? Uh, what is your greatest memory? What are you most proud of? Oh, there we go. what are, we are, what are you most proud of? Most proud. There we go. Of question mark. Ask the question. All the kids are crossing their fingers. <laughs> well. Depending on what phase of life, I, I, even to this day, somebody found it and it's on a mantelpiece somewhere, on a shelf. Little tiny cup, about that size, with my name on it, at this camp where I performed that play that I talk about. I performed uh, in a play in, in a camp, and I was six years old. And they must have given me this cup. <laughs> and I've kept it all these years. I'm with these top professionals at Stratford. What is the there. opposite <laughs> of the <laughs> uncanny valley? Where, where, where there is no uncanny valley. And it's like, yeah, Mount, no. I, it, yeah, I, it's I, I it's, just, called, it's called Mount Canny. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that this is just a Skype call. <laughs> yeah. Like five or six people up for the same one. But I want to see you go, bleh. if I see bleh, I know the rest is going to come out. I'm looking, I'm looking. What's he going to say? And the winner is, is he going to say, bleh? he says, bleh, and I turn around. You now have the authentic experience of everybody who waits four hours in line at Dragon Con. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly what you get this on the other terrible. end of it. It's uh, pretty amazing. Ask... Uh, uh, do we? I mean, I think we get. I think we understand. I could do this all day. I know I you understand. could. You I know you could. I know you could. I know you could. So, Andrew, you brought story file to us. Um, Are you going to story you. file yourself? I think that I think we've we've talked a lot. The idea of creating your sort of digital version of yourself that can answer questions has been a thing in science fiction for a long time. And it's neat to see here's a company that's actually made something. And then the case of like with Ed Asner, where apparently his family was touched or one of the family was that they were very touched by this because here was an opportunity to talk to somebody and ask a question you never had a chance to ask. Using an AI, using a system like here, it's using just a recall system to basically pull up stories from what you're doing. But you could do a thing. You could take somebody like William Shatner and say, hey, uh, do you want us to use all of your biographies, the, all, all your autobiographies? Um, yeah. Do you want us to use all this stuff to then even give it way more and let a digital voice reenact this, say this? We're at the point right now where, yeah, you get it. This was a pretty compelling, this was a neat experience. Yeah. And you could think about like, uh, you know, I went to went to David Copperfield's museum and David gives you this very detailed history of magic sort of lesson, tells you about, you know, all these little things he has there. The idea of a David Copperfield digitizing everything he knows, his career, his all sort of stuff and being able to interact with that as a magician would be amazing because you could just all the questions that I want to bother him with that uh, he's got better things to do than answer. That would be great. You start thinking about your really great teachers, really great people, you know, think about Brian, think about a version of you that constantly updates this. There's a membership program where people can go in and ask you stuff and it's virtual you and stuff that you said before we're there now. It's exciting. And if you mix in, you know, ge voice generation, speech and voice synthesis, uh, you know, even some of the machine learning things, both of uh, images e and e video. Even like yeah. a linguistic fingerprinting to match the, the, the way you tend mm -hmm. to write. Yeah. I, I, would, think, I, I would wonder exciting. if you just like entered everything that somebody has ever done and then you interacted with them like that while they were still alive, how much, I mean, I assume the fidelity would be great, right? Because that's the only, the only worry about this as a legacy tool is that, you know, at, at, at some point a quirk in how the machine is interpreting the data becomes the story as opposed to what somebody might actually have thought. But I would I would love to see you know, some, some real world, you know, double barreled examples of like, Hey, ask this real person, ask the, the, the sum of all their work. What, what a they might fidelity believe. test, if you will. Indeed. The, uh, there's already, uh, interesting experiments. Um, 
uh, there was a You Are Not So Smart article on it uh, uh, talking about how there's an Oculus VR thing. I think we might have mentioned it on this show where it's like you talk to a fake Dr. Sigmund Freud and you explain your uh, problem and you talk it out and he nods or whatever. Then you press play and you switch roles and you watch yourself explain. And once you are physically outside of the body, you're like, oh, you're just covering up the fact that what you really want to do is this. This is a bunch of BS what you're spinning right now. It, it, that, that perspective shift seems to be significant. So I wonder if even before these are memorials for the deceased, they, they would be functional ways to self, uh, self cross examine. Well, and again, this they're not pushing it just as for the deceased. They're putting it for anybody who wants to interact with, you know, William Shatner. But yeah, I think to your, to your like interrogate yourself, ask yourself stuff. I think digital therapists, I think that they're going to get yeah. really good very fast. And you're going to see a lot of pushback because you're going to, you know, realize that, oh man, I could just have this long going conversation for nothing to nothing. And, you know, I think therapy is one of these things. There are probably people who are exceptional at it people who are mediocre at it and people who are really bad at it. And you don't know, is somebody going to it who you're experiencing? I would like my therapist to be more of a robot. Like I think that, yeah, that, yeah just, just, I need, I need, I need people to be precise about therapizing as opposed to just kind of winging it and thinking that they're weird shamans of the mind. Well, Justin, first, oh, that's only amazing. an idiot calls it therapy. Only an idiot calls it therapizing. <laughs> Because, like, I actually respect my therapist the most because he's so good at not saying anything. And the moment I find myself creeping up on a question and I'll, I, I, I realize, of course, you're not going to answer. You're not in the answer giving. You, you're just going to ask me what I think about it. And so I'm going, right, fine. All right. Here's what I think about it. And I stopped seeing my therapist because he didn't talk enough. And I'm like, this is what I do for a living, man. I'm I'm paying you to like like uh, 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 at least ask some good questions, uh, uh, because otherwise, like, he's, he's like, oh, how does that make you feel? It's like, what do you think I do for a living? All I do is talk about how this makes me feel. And this, like, I, I want to robe it. I think there's good chances that something like this shows up in the next few years, because that that is an industry that is kind of. Uh, uh, it, it, worker starved a little bit exactly you know, um my understanding is that uh you know there are therapists and then there are like r registered uh clinical nurse it's it, it they the, they've kind of brought in the definitions uh and then psychiatrists and well and then or, but but yeah like, but yeah but you have like like all of better help for example is by and large a lot of people that are in a in a in a step below accreditation there can of there are specific specific type of registered nurse yeah there's somewhere it's between less, life coach and psychologist well, right or psychiatrist whichever whichever the one that can't prescribe drugs they're they're in the, they're in the demigod category and with, with how pervasive something like better help is um i could totally see them trying to do this right oh talk to e janet and she'll listen to you call me e janet oh, oh, uh, <laughs> You know what I wouldn't even mind is if um, I'll use promo code beep boop. So so it's like a uh, thank uh, you. When when I was paying for uh, gym training, I would never mind it if if uh, my trainer came up and was like, "All right, you got to get warmed up. Do ten minutes of this, ten minutes of this, ten minutes of this." She didn't need to be around for all that part, uh, and then show up. So it's like I could totally see going into a therapy session where it's like work with the e trainer figure out exactly what your real questions are so that when I come back in 30 minutes, I can answer your real questions. Yeah. It's, I think, cause some people, I think for therapy is they just want a, a, a neutral party outside of their life to talk to. And I think that's a case where it can sometimes like, yeah, just have a person you pay to talk to and not judge you. And then for trying to get the work done or figure stuff out, you know, for me, it's always just been books have been helpful for me, but like I get, I get, I don't know. I've never gone to a therapist because, like, to me, it's like I feel like I'm just going to get, like, well, what do you think? I'm like, I think I ask myself that all the time. So, you know, and just be a kind of a loop. So, there yeah. is something different about saying it out loud, though. I'll, I'll, I'll attest to that. Uh, e even if it's an audience of just one, 
it, it's different. It's it's different. There's thinking it. There's saying it out loud with only you in the room, and then there's saying it out loud knowing literally one other human on the planet yeah. is hearing these words. Fine. I'm offended by animal nudity. Okay, I have said it. I knew it. This is, bit, this is a big sweater. Dogs and cats prancing around. No pants, no nothing. I mostly get mad at therapists because I think I'm better at their job than they are. <laughs> I yep. bet you're right. You should tell I your therapist you are. that. I, I, I did. I just I did. <laughs> I did tell my therapist that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and like it's a, it's a high bar. Like, look, I'm I'm really is, good. I could tell you how to do your job better right now, but that would not be useful to me. Now, if I had a robot, yes. then I like like that would be the inky poo to my John Henry. Like, I would eventually lie battered and broken with my heart exploded in front of my computer because the great the great machine would would beat me. It beat you. I all I know is Defe- all yeah. the messed up people. All, all the messed up people I knew when I was younger, like all everybody I knew who ended up being a therapist was just really screwed up. I like, was just I, really screwed the up. The most horrifying. Uh, it took me until you know about a year ago to to do any kind of therapy, and the reason why was because we had a free promo code for World's Greatest Con. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, and it largely because I spent one night partying with people who were getting their doctorates uh uh for that field and i was like you guys are by far the most effed up people i have ever been around and it took me minutes and i grew up in south florida like there's no shortage of insane unhinged characters that i have been exposed to and all of you are the worst and it's not close and i i I did not go to a therapist until last year Wow. I just like, like in high school, if your car's broken, who are you going to ask? The person with the broken car or the person <laughs> with the really good running car? The kids, the kids in, sh- you know, auto class who know how to fix this stuff. And like, you know, I don't know. I just, everyone I've known, everybody I've known, I have friends whose parents do this stuff. They're crazy. Nuts. They're crazy. <laughs> Nuts. Like and like dangerous. Like, like like I don't know if I want you to have my phone number. Crazy. Wow. And I I had a friend that was going to see a therapist, and she said something. She's like, "Yeah, my therapist and I, we we were dropping some acid, and one of the things I re- I'm like, wait, what? And this is like 20 plus years ago. I'm like, you know, that's unethical, illegal, and extremely well. But we get along really good. I'm like, this sounds like a drug dealer and not really a therapist. And and this it's is a, a person who's licensed to perform. In. It's a great in. <laughs> yeah, this is a person who's licensed to perform and whatnot. And again, actually using microdosing things like that for treatment, completely different subject. That's sure. There may be some really legitimate use for that stuff like that, but this was just like, ah, you know, this is some not even psychosis. Oh, let's drop some and then we'll figure out. We'll figure this stuff out. Like, hmm. I, I I do think that there is a worth to therapy, and 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 I don't want to leave yeah, this on on a negative on a negative light totally about it because uh, uh, I I did enjoy a few of the sessions, uh, uh, but uh, again I think this is a me problem, not a not a him problem. I was yeah, just, thousand percent. I, was, I think I was anybody who's talking. Him. Yeah, I think thousand percent. Like I was saying before, I think there are some people probably high quality, some not, like doctors or anything like else like that. Don't be afraid to say, hey, this is not the right person for me or whatever. I think there are really capable people out there that can help people get mm-hmm. through stuff. I just, the problem is there's so many charlatans. It's hard to spot a charlatan. Exactly. And and, and the danger of therapy too, it's like, okay, you know, the, a doctor will have a practice and want to treat X number of people. And you kind of treat people, you treat them until they die. And hopefully you keep them alive long enough to keep treating them. In therapy, you're not incentivized the same way because it's like, oh, I, I can fix you in three sessions and you're done. That's not a successful therapy practice if you don't have enough people coming in. And now that Andrew and I have excoriated <laughs> the world of therapy, we'd like to direct you to the works of L. Ron Hubbard. Dianetics <laughs> right. is among the most popular books that... Talk about messed up people wanting to get into mental health. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I like it. It's... Look, it's it is it is difficult to like find because it is very valuable because it it can be very powerful, you know, yeah. having having regular uh you know therapy or or just planned talking to somebody. Oh my that god, is super, yeah, super there, helpful. There can be and, events in your life that you go through that you're unprepared for 
grief, whatever, and being able to talk to somebody about this who's who's talked to other people who've gone through that, incredibly valuable, incredibly, incredibly valuable. And I, I, I absolutely think that it's a provides a very, very valuable service there. So I apologize if I two percent of them are fantastic and really helpful. <laughs> I'm sure it's it's difficult to find someone you get on you get on well with. yeah and and yeah. it's not exactly a system that's easy to break into to find those people anyway and it's expensive. yeah and it is expensive. uh commenter says took me four therapists to find the one i've been seeing for and that's great i think that's that was being willing to say hey i need to find the right fit i think that's good yeah so yep. kudos to you kudos to you for having the strength to sort of say hey i, I need to find something different. They i'm make glad that you if they make a therapy bot should should they make a william shatner skin and they make skin. They could make skins for these for these, these chatbots. I want. I, I want. Love, I, want, I, want, I want a VTuber therapist. <laughs> I get shit yeah, digs I, to be my I, therapist. I love William Shatner, but I want the Leonard Nimoy one. Yeah, because oh, he's so yeah. calming. Okay. In search of you. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I want just a, like a like a tiki head. <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> I, when you first said that, Tell I thought me of the shrunken your head. Father. <laughs> I thought of the shrunken head from like the Harry Potter Knights bus. Yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that's a someone, whole other conversation. Someone would make a Dr. Melfi, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. That'd be like a pre that'd be like a, a HBO oh, would do HBO somebody would would make like a Hannibal dollars. Hannibal Lecter. I bet you Hannibal Lecter was probably really good. Oh. <laughs> that might that might actually be dangerous and bad. Just pay your just pay your bill. Just pay your bill. Yeah, Be respectful. <laughs> Captive don't, audience. Don't track mud on the carpet. <laughs> Doctor, Cr- oh Fraser, Cra- Fraser. Oh my God, yeah. got to be Fraser, especially if it's like digital. How did you will? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Toss right, salads and picks? scrambled eggs, bot. <laughs> Dot exe. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I got a pick. What did you pick? I like House of the Dragon. Yeah, I like House of the Dragon so much. I was annoyed they didn't get their own theme song. I was like, give, your, give them their own theme song. It's competent, methadone, Game of Thrones. And I don't think it operates on all the levels that Game of Thrones did. It's a more pared-down story, which I think probably is, is a, a smarter decision if you're not adapting a whole thing and you, can, and you can kind of pick and choose and focus on something. So far, the acting's uh, 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 great. I'm enjoying the, 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 the Game of Thronesy sort of uh, uh, political stuff. Uh, uh, around it and uh i like it i like it so far so uh which is good a pleasant uh a, a pleasant surprise because i was not expecting to like it hard to get the words because like you know the words to the game of thrones theme Tyrion lannister <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get that out of your head i i also dig it i watching it um it feels different than all of the shows that like want to be game of thrones yes uh, and I, I don't they, know they, they, they got they got the essence and it might just be lighting 40,000 candles a scene <laughs> like they, they the, the candle budget on this show is insane. Yeah. And 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 I think part of it is just because it's such a very traditional script. You know, it's just scene and scene and there's not like uh, over when the and dragons cut. pop out. That's, wow, well, that's a little less traditional. But but I don't know. It's 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 interesting, and they yeah they do a good job of setting up interesting stakes and not just telling you all of the, the things you should be thinking. And and a good sneering. Who doesn't love a good sneering Matt Smith? You know, he went from Doctor Who to Prince Philip, and and now uh, uh, I like him when he's Morbius. Oh yeah, I didn't see more. I didn't I didn't see it's Morbin time. Uh, Wait, but, he was Morbius? No, he oh, was in no, Morbius. He was in Morbius. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, I I think uh, uh he he fits well into the uh, uh the universe. And and the the conflicts that they have are the kind of things that I'm like, "Oh, I was missing that medieval real politic decision making. You know, oh, should we do there's uh, four ships versus two t- t- attorneys. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, mass- perhaps we should just drive a Ford F-150 into the <laughs> northern sea. But can the treasury uh, bear it? Uh, let's take another 30 minutes. And I loved that when it mattered. You know, Game of Thrones early yes. on. That yes. Di- oh, yeah. Uh, we're not going to spend the budget on the wedding repercussions later on like uh budget talk blah 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 anything this is what happens yeah yeah no i think that the, and and there is 
part of what is valuable about paring down this story and it's not hopping all over the the, the globe in four different things like you you have a, a, a better sense that we're just going to follow these three main characters they're going to interact with each other they're going to go on these kind of side quests uh i really like the villain that they introduced in in episode two i think it's a really rad character design i love the idea of that realm of of, of game of thrones specifically any kind of the the naval elements uh so uh yeah you're not you're not going to be distracted to be like oh crap we got to wrap up this thing real quick because we got to get back to these the, the 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 people that are the the main characters we know who the main characters meanwhile are. sansa yeah yeah there we go dragon house uh, hey i got a pick it started off a little bit slower than i dared hope uh but uh boy is it on fire right now it is season four of what we do in the shadows this last episode tickled me in all kinds of ticklish ways. I loved it. Uh, stuff paid off that you were just waiting to pay off. It was great. Yeah, they kind of break yeah. the format. I haven't watched this season yet, but to all you folks out there, if you're not watching what we do in the shadows, shame. Are, are, shame are, you, are you aware of what this, final, or what this most recent episode is, Andrew? Not a clue. So they've been setting up throughout this season. Uh, uh, one of the vampires is obsessed with a house flipping show on HGTV mm. or an HGTV esque kind of network. Played and by so, uh, the Sklar brothers. Yeah. And so uh, uh, we get just a full episode of it. And the attention to detail in reality tropes that, that, uh, that goes into this episode is delightful. I. I uh, immediately texted our our mutual friend uh, Katie Dirks, who has worked in reality television for the last you know I don't I don't want to date her but a while, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we were just nerding out over every every little dumb trope that they that they worked L into L little details like uh, well, uh, don't spoil it. Okay, all right, don't spoil it. He's gonna enjoy it. He's gonna enjoy it. He's gonna enjoy it. Gonna, yeah. yeah. I, I'm looking forward to I look forward to discussing it with you, Brian, and geeking out over it. I right, but again, that show that is one of if you ask me like what are some of the best my top like top five best comedy in the last ten years. Um I think you should leave. Yeah. Uh what we yeah. do in shadows, those are just just uh I could, you know, go on about scenes from either one of those and just Amazing. And this, this season has been, has been great. Great season. Yeah. I got to pick. Pick uh, it up. This is maybe a little left field. Uh, I had seen, I had seen, I keep, I keep up with some of the entertainment news for Cord Killers. And I'd seen a thing and thought, oh, you know, I'd never seen that. I, I'll, I'll go watch that. Uh, and so over the weekend, I watched uh, Hellraiser. Whoa, the first one? Mm. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Uh, Welcome home. That's a that's a that's an interesting little movie, huh? Well, uh, if 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 you're able to imagine it, imagine when the internet wasn't there to explain to you this entire subculture, and this was just all of America's first introduction to BDSM sexuality yeah. with a supernatural twist. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. quite a ride for when I was twelve. It was uh, uh, very gory. Uh, more kind of, I don't know. I didn't, I, I really didn't know any, I only saw the Hulu news that, that they're doing an, an, a reboot or they bought the reboot for, for Hellraiser. So I, I thought, I'll go check it out. It was on a prime. Amazon prime has, I think at least the first couple of them. Um, I only watched the first one, but yeah, I, I, it's interesting cause I don't know. It feels like a, a, a series that like is iconic and then you watch it uh and it's like oh this is pretty cheap looking this is uh <laughs> yeah it 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 for sure it, and uh but yeah i think i saw it in a theater as a teenager when that came out and i it was pretty transgressive for the time for the amount of gore and the in the torture and all that like it, it and that, like as brian said at the time like that was all new like wow these people wear these people like leather and vinyl you know <laughs> and I'm like welcome to the mind of clive barker yeah. Uh, so it, it's, it was very different that lighting, a lot of that, like fog and the blue light coming in from one direction, whatever, very, there is like a three year period or four year period where that was like everywhere. You could just date stuff with the lighting design, but a very different film, very different point of view on that. So 
Yeah. Almost a um uh uh almost a Hitchcocky and sort of 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 take of of kind of switching characters uh halfway halfway yeah. through the movie. I don't know. It's 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 very interesting and it's not the way I I would think a horror movie or a very hard genre sci-fi uh supernatural adventure movie would go am, today. Am I remembering right in that the Cenobites weren't necessarily good or evil, they were just freaky and they would just kind of show up to They just gawk at stuff. Well they they uh, they got pleasure out of pain. Right. Uh and I guess they attracted humans who felt the same. And I, and I, I, I assume, boy, it's been a minute, but I assume the end of the movie is they locked the box again. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they locked the box and only a couple of people died. Yeah. Uh, cause I think that's, that's the franchise, right? Is that the Senate, but they really make it around pin, pinhead. Let me give you the Wikipedia. Pinhead uh. is one of the leaders of the Cenobites, said to be humans who were later transformed in demonic creatures blindly devoted to the practice of experimental sadomasochism. They exist in an extra-dimensional realm that is hell or one of many versions of hell that coexist. They are usually only summoned to Earth via puzzle boxes. Usually. What do you sell, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Oh my god, hey, we need to call Hulu. Who is to say? <laughs> <laughs> What is your pleasure, Justin? <laughs> Has there been a Hellraiser puzzle box? Uh, has to be. I, 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 I there has a to branded, have been. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure at some point. Yeah, yeah. certainly yeah, a prop or a license. replica. But yeah. but uh, in the comic books, they would do really clever stuff. Like um, uh, they would you you would be following the story of a blind musician who discovers a curious set of notes that feels dirty and wrong, and and the more he or she d uh, delves into them, eventually it becomes a, a version of the puzzle. Or, gotcha, yeah. Uh, and I think there's one that's in space where they make a giant space box or whatever. Ooh. Yeah, maybe we'll watch, maybe we'll watch the sequels. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. Prime it. Andrew, you got a pick? I do have a pick, and I have a confession. Oh. Although I'm an author, I uh, don't um, read as much as I should and have a very short attention span. And sometimes it takes me forever to finish a book to make my way through stuff. So I like short books. I like books that are like, you know, for audio, like 10 hours. It's good. It's good. Cause I know I'll get to the end of it. Sometimes I like a big one, but, uh, one of it, there's an author I really like Alistair Reynolds, who I think writes really well, really good space opera stuff. But some of these books are very big, which is great. But for me in my short attention span, hard, not, Challenge. Oh, yeah, hard. Mm. And he wrote a book called Eversion. And uh, it's one of its shortest, like I think one of his shortest novels. It, you know, it's 353 words. So it's still 353 pages, which is pretty big. It's like an eight hour audio book. And I enjoyed it. It's it sort of follows kind of like one character, one premise. And, uh, you know, if somebody wants to read that description. From the ma uh, uh, in the 1800s, a sailing ship crashes off the coast of Norway. In the 1900s, a zeppelin explores an icy canyon in Antarctica. In the far future, a spaceship sets out for an ancient alien artifact. Or alien artifact. Each excursion goes horribly wrong, and on every journey, Doctor Silas Code is the physician. But only Silas seems to realize that these events keep repeating themselves, and it's up to him to figure out why and how and how to stop it all from happening again. A version now available. So I, the premise, like from the kind of the opening, I'm like, oh, like, like I loved the TV film, the miniseries version of the terror and stuff, but like applying the terror to sci-fi and stuff. And so it's just, and you get there, you get to what the conceit is and it's still pretty enjoyable. And I like, like the writing, really enjoyed it. So your version is my recommendation. Nice. Cool. That was a good, always good, always good audio book recommendation as well. Mm -hmm. yep. So. I'm gonna give this five stars because I like it, and that seems pretty. Seems it's pretty been small. weird. Oh, that's a billion, <laughs> trillions of stars, <laughs> quadrillion. We're all made of five star stuff. Hey, hey Justin, <laughs> how, how how have you been? Pretty good, man. How are you? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, Bryce, Bryce, how, how how's it been for you? Uh, it's he, good. He said it. He already said it. Oh, 
Yeah, he said yeah, this is like an epilogue. Oh, <laughs> all right, all right. yeah, the epilogue where Brian doesn't know that he said it. Yeah, well, maybe I was gonna buy that book that he was mentioning. Oh, oh you were too busy uh, buying the book. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. okay, okay. So I can go to the bathroom now. <laughs> yes, you can. It's been weird. It's been, oh, go Keith, go ahead. I said it again. <laughs> said it again. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us in the thing. Uh, uh, do, do we do we have an after things or? I have time. I just yeah. gotta use a. Okay. Break room. All right, All right, you guys use the bathroom, and then I'll talk, and then I'll use the bathroom, and then we'll do it. Hey, sounds like a plan. Hi, Justin. Hey, Bryce. How goes it, buddy? Big BC. The big BC to the big JY. The beast. The beast. I'm be and I'm going and I'm simply going beast mode. You are. I'm, I'm going beast mode. Man. Um. I wanted to check in on how's your Wordle check in. The Wordle chat you has gotten what? a little a little mechanical, but I think that that's fine. I'm I'm I'm. I'm still digging it. Yeah. Do it with Ashley every morning. We're still into it. We're still sharing the same amount of things. You want to know what I'm not doing anymore? What are you not I doing? I probably anymore? will will uninstall soon. What? Be real. Yeah. It's been real. It's been real. It's been real. I think for uh I think if you are a a child, if you are in grade school and you're doing something different all the time, Okay, like go for or it. Or if I really care about who my friends are hanging out with, then maybe I would care. Right. But boy, I love all my friends. Y'all got desk jobs. I got it. <laughs> Did I'm, you see? I'm just seeing your your desktops all the time. And and it's great. I love it. You guys are I mean, I love everybody that I'm friends with on Be Real, but holy crap, do I need to do I need to not I don't need I don't need to be berated. I don't need to mm -hmm. feel like I was doing it late. I don't need, I don't know. There, there might be another version of this where, uh, yeah. where there is a little bit of discoverability. I am seeing some people who are doing crazy stuff. Well, and like, but I don't need to, this right now. And you want to know what? Here's what actually broke me. What? They would hit me with, by the time that I got the alert, it was already past when they said it should have been. So I was like late and I'm like, yeah. screw you late. I did it as fast as I can. Or I logged in. There were a few times during the the trip to Europe mm. where it was like just not loading. Right. Cause, cause their servers are uh, not exactly hefty. Stinko Malinko is what I would call them. What they need to do. I think what they should change, what, what they need to do, what they should do is, uh, change it so that instead of at a random time in the day uh you just you post one thing a day you choose when it will give you a reminder hey you haven't posted your thing yet today if you want to see your friends things post it like normal but don't I, I think this attaching it to a random time uh doesn't make sense i've really enjoyed when i can just not think about it and then if something pops up i can go oh this can be my very late be real when I think if they make it like a credit system or just a token thing of like, you have a be real today. What, what do you want to be real with? And then then at least I feel like I can plan around it or I can be intentional about it because I'm not exactly in a spontaneous mode. I'm at home a lot I because I don't want to be the desk job poster. Yeah. And some people are cool with that. Some people are down for that. But I, I don't that for me. That's not me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. It's coming to an end. I don't know if today's the day. I don't know if tomorrow's the day, but be real. Borrow time. Watch out. Borrow time. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um. You know what I watched over the weekend? What'd you watch? I watched uh, Harley Quinn. Did you start it? Do you know why I like that show? Why? Because I don't really got to watch it. I don't really got to watch it. Yeah. It's good, but I can I could just throw it on. It can just be a background show. It's good. And when I watch it, it's cool and it's fun. And they say the, they say curse words. They say curse words, and there's and there's it's a little raunchy. And, and there's funny. Batman the animated series styled characters that are saying curse words. Yeah, and that's fun. Like the child voice Robin is good. Yeah, uh, but ultimately, just what made me have a very good experience with it with it was having it on my laptop and then playing video games for an hour and I just think not thinking about it. That's a good use for it. Yeah, right here, BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. Yeah. I'm at a Harley Harley Quinn. I'm enjoying it as a background show. Uh, how far are you? I don't even know. <laughs> I, I fell asleep at, with it on. Uh, I think I'm still in this first season. Um, but it's you know I watch I, I watched the first episode maybe a, a little more um, 
uh, uh, with, a, with a little more intention. But ultimately, it was just... Uh, it was fun to have on in the background. It felt like... Uh, it is funny. Like or It is very kind of in the same energy as Rick and Morty. You know? Um, raunchy, a little edgy. But, uh, but also with a harder set of rules. It doesn't go full anything goes. I, I mean, so. it's, it's got to be in DC Universe with DC playthings and so on. Mm -hmm. They're they're doing something, uh, yeah. I don't know. And then I think I really liked it because I really disliked Lower Decks this week. <laughs> um, I see. Says you two need to do a review show together. Shut up, I see. Not uh, <laughs> not not to spoil uh, Lower Decks, but do you think it was just too much in Inside Baseball? Yeah, that was a big part of it. Yeah, big big part of it. I could totally see that. And oh yeah, and and then just also, I don't I don't love it when a story <laughs> thinks it's cute by saying, and also it was all inconsequential anyway. I never I, that's not a funny bit to me. I have not seen that level of like it. I don't know. It's pretty rare that it, that a show is like, no, everything's gonna be fine, and then. That really is the case, you know, and 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 yeah. uh, like like that's maybe a one out of twenty, one out of thirty experience. And so as a result, I was like, uh, every so often, I like that surprise where it's like, yeah, you should trust the process. <laughs> that was, it, like, it was neat, and also like, I hope that wasn't to me. If that's the moral of the episode, then then it's a real bummer to just be like, yep, you should have believed it because we all had. Pie and lollipops over here. You know, it's like what it's happened? all a fictional. We're talking about lower decks. Lower decks. Oh, never mind. Um, I don't know. Carry we'll on. talk about it in spoiler time. Because I mean, I guess we just spoil the whole thing anyway. But uh, how long are you going to keep be real around, Brian? Are you still being real? Because I'm, I'm being not. real a third of the time now. Wow. I'm, I'm, start, I'm, I'm starting I'm to get annoyed high. with it. Well, especially if it's going to be like at some point it just shines a spotlight on the fact that I'm in front of a computer monitor in the same and all shack. my and all my friends are <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like okay we get it uh lesson learned yeah they, yeah they need to they need to change it because I'm I'm I don't I, I don't love it and I don't love seeing the notification just stay up there the whole time I'm not gonna do it I'm just not gonna I wouldn't do mind it. uh I wouldn't mind it in if Maybe they they mixed it up a little bit where sometimes it's time based, other times it's location based. Where it's like, it's like, hey, you're somewhere interesting. What's up? You know, and then you gotta log it in. Yeah, just give everyone a just give everybody a post a day, and reset the post. Oh, at the, at the speaking same time. of posts, I finally signed up for Be Real. <laughs> I was worried that it would get monotonous and showing my workplace every single day. All the things I told you why I didn't want to do it initially would be true. Oh my Completely wrong. All great features. Sorry, you've been so hurt by it. It was good for. I know. I never. When you guys did it, bit. I was hearing was you talk about it. Bit. I'm like, right. when, when you guys sign up for it, you're like, I'm like, so like every day it's gonna be one. I can't show anything on that other computer screen, and two, I don't want to show my inbox, and like me in front of a computer screen sounds depressing. Yeah, you know. Although I would, I would. Uh, it was been a while. That's it. I made a game out of like uh, just just googling something interesting and taking a picture of that. And <laughs> see, you were no longer real. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You're being fake. A real. Fake. Fake. Um. Alrighty. Uh. We want to do some after things. Let's. Go. Yeah. Oh, we did get um an updated um. Uh, we did get a little bit of an update. We got uh, uh, so we we did Joe's press kit last week. We we kind of talked about uh, his, the press kit he has, and he sent an update. He he updated it and made some changes uh, since then. But um, so that's on the table. It is if, cool. If you'd like. Do we have uh, any other any other thoughts? Any other ideas? Any other business things going on? Things that are happening that we're allowed to talk about. I'm I'm about to make a big life change. You are. You're about to move. Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Not at all terrified. 
Um, alrighty. Uh, and uh, you said you don't have a hard out, Andrew. Uh, I I do like oh. at one forty, like one thirty, okay. one forty. Perfect. Well, then let's get started with some after things then. Uh, going there, going there. All right. Well, and take away for after things in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. It's true. So, gentlemen, uh, I am contemplating moving from the Los Angeles area to the Bay Area. Mm, wow. The That's... old California two-step, as they call it. Yeah. That's a big move. I call it... St- Slow stalking Justin. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is uh, a, a a a work move, or are you looking to get a more temperate climate? More former than latter. Okay. Uh, it, it is the company I work at. I think things are just happening really fast. Very very exciting. Um, I'm work from home. Like I don't have to move there, but every time I go there, I was there last week working on a project and it's great to be around the people you work with in person. It's great to just sort of randomly run into somebody and say, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this. Like, Oh, you should talk to so-and-so. And And then they talk to so-and-so and and then things happen. So I'm a, I'm kind of a big fan of that. I get that, you know, there's this whole, like, it's, it's funny, like the, now that we know work from home works, I think it does work for certain things. And I'm able to do a lot of what I do there, but I'm a person that wants to do even more. Uh, I, I know there people have a lot of mixed feelings about it, but for me, I do see the value of being there in person. Yeah. You know, th- there's a big uh, conversation that's, that's kind of going on, especially in the Bay area where you have a lot of people that work in the South Bay uh, and uh, some companies, including Apple, which is uh, about to hit a deadline that people are going to have to work three days a week from the office, and they're getting a lot of pushback uh, uh, on that. Uh, I tend to think that, Andrew, you are putting yourself in the greatest of all positions, which is you can be in the office when you want, and then you can leave when you want. Uh, uh, that is that is mwah, chef's kiss, because I agree with you. Like It's been really fun being here in person at, at, at the studio. Uh, and it's been also really fun being able to come and go whenever the hell I want. So like that is, that is something that, that I, I, I think is the, the, the perfect mushy middle. Hmm. How are you uh, now? You, you've, you've been there, you know, on, on trips, how are you going to feel? Uh, are you going to try and go, I don't know, all in every day for, for a while and then pair back? Are you going to dip a toe in with maybe one day a week? going in versus versus being at home well i haven't even thought about that Ah. i haven't even thought about that um you know i might just be there as often as i am now i don't know i I mean it's just the difference i don't have to hop on an airplane uh like i've been there one or two trips a month over the last several months if those of you who keep in my attendance here may have noticed that so (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I think it, it, it's, it's nice to be able to sort of hop on over and be there and sort of have a flexible schedule. So what are, what are some of your concerns? Oh, it's a new area. A big part of it too is, you know, my wife, she's into film and you know, the film scene in LA is where the, film the, is. The, the film scene. Yeah. But it is the, the industry scene, you know? Yeah. And so there's a lot of film scenes in a lot of places. And so kind of the impact on her for me it, for me it's kind of an easy sort of choice because this is where it is but it's also you know gonna an impact for her so we've been having discussions about that and you know her 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 career is as important as mine you know so that's uh, the thing i have to think about how are you there is a vibe difference between uh, uh, uh la and and where you are it uh, within la versus the uh, uh northern california bay area are you uh are, are you uh, i mean preparing what, what for that? one of the two is known for high taxation uh, difficult cost of living homeless all right. people all, all right. over all right yeah i don't you know what i like about what's interesting about the bay area if you've never been there is that you have all these little communities on a map. You just see it spread out, but you go over a hill and you're in a different little town and then you're in a different place and different place. And then you got it's, and it's kind of neat because you're literally 15 minutes away from a kind of a different environment. And we, we started at the South of the Northern peninsula in like 
uh, Sausalito, it drove north. And you could just see that culture shifting the further you went. But then when we went to uh, East Bay and the further east you went, you saw that shift. So, yeah, you know, it is it is uh, it is stratted out in a way. I mean, L.A. is stratted out as well. But but I, I feel like there is a little bit more of a unifying kind of architecture and, and stuff like that, whereas the, the Bay Area very much has micro cultures as much as it has kind of micro climates uh of you know and you're not really far from everything i would say also the traffic is different in that you really only are avoiding like two or three bottlenecks and everybody knows what the bottlenecks are and if you're going off hours it's really not all that bad i, I found bay area traffic a lot easier to deal with than la traffic where you never know wherever you're going whether or not it's going to be locked up for absolutely no reason what? yeah because it's bay area is kind of like there's like three routes yes you, know, you are going like, off you're going across so one it, of the bridges or you're going down south to silicon valley where there's one highway and that's pretty much it yeah so it's yeah it's less of a the 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 weather traffic is you know it seems to be a lot more discernible and it's if you've never been by the way to san francisco there are things that you just take for you just take for granted without thinking about and i spend a lot of time there that you'll see cars with lidar and self-driving apparatus on it for testing everywhere i've saw more of those than i did amazon delivery trucks like they're just everywhere and you just forget oh that car is not mapping this area that car is self-driving it's literally testing itself in san francisco traffic and that was sort of a funny thing to think about like yeah, this is a place, and there are people in there, you know, monitoring them. But like, literally, there are robots on the road testing right now. Yeah. Uh, two questions. One: Is there a time pressure to make this happen? And number two: uh, uh, Are are you going to be one of the lucky beneficiaries of the exodus from the area when it comes to housing prices? Uh, there's so much pressure on the area. It's not like the exodus is very. It's it's not, you know, it's not like a U-Haul trailer going in state. Um, it's because there's so much demand for housing that the challenge is the market is softening, so there's fewer houses available. So, you know, that's gonna be the challenge. There's just there is a lot of not a lot of inventory. That was that was that. that was a lot of the problem. Was that, you know, when we were when we were looking at at places before we decided to move, it's like, you know, there's there's a world in which we would have really loved to stay up there, but even the the problem with with the bay area's housing thing is is inventory like like andrew said so it's like if if you know all of a sudden more people are leaving and so more houses are available it's like oh no just the entire strata of people richer than us will now have houses to buy that were priced out of it uh uh, uh it's going to have to take a lot at, at the point where things are going to have to decline that we're in the market for some of these places uh uh we might as well yeah, that that's the hard part. And it's people ask me like, "Oh, how do the prices compare?" I'm like, "Well, the prices are like the same in LA, you just get a different amount of house." And even in looking yeah. at LA houses, I'm like, "Oh man, like I look at what I could buy here." I'm like, "Oh, wow, that's comparatively, you know, forget what the other parts of the country which because the Bay Area is so insane. And when you get South Bay, around Cupertino, Palo Alto, Mountain View, where Google and Facebook Crazy. and Apple are, you you look at what, you know, a one bedroom simple little house and you just go like probably it's what insane you know 100 dollars you know sure yeah kind of 100. yeah 150 it's if it's you're, nice yeah. if you got if do, you do, do, yeah, that's yeah. what you'll be that's what you'll be paying in mortgage interest every year yes. uh, yeah i was gonna say yeah that that's that's what you need to put in your application yes that is your application fee is 120 thousand. Yeah. uh uh and you're right like you're not getting you're you're you know you're, you're going to be in some palo alto neighborhood in a, in a, in a two-bedroom place now your next door neighbor might be the VP of Facebook. Uh, and so that's, that's yeah. the value for it. Right. But, but everybody's living in these, you know, smaller, uh, smaller houses. Okay. Next to scenic of Facebook VP, uh, yeah. close to schools, but yeah, no, it, it, just, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So the life choice for me was artificial intelligence is moving very fast. It's a very exciting time. I'm in a very lucky position to be involved in it and work with really really exceptional people and 
the idea that do I, I can keep doing remote, but as I watch, I think really historic things happening, where do I want to be? And and my gut tells me you need to be close to it. And this is also a big thing because you've been, you know, an, an entrepreneur for as long as I've known you, you've worked for yourself for, for as you know, for the vast majority of the time that we've been friends. Uh, obviously you've worked now in concert with, uh, the, the, this company for a little bit, but you know, to be closer, to be tied closer to it, uh, I think represents how much you believe that this technology is kind of, you know, not only having a moment, but will have the kind of, of leap that, you know, when, when you think about iconic technologies, like, you know, search or, or, or servers or smartphones, you know, uh, 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 these kind of things that had these massive near decade long arcs. If you think about AI as being at the beginning of it, then yeah, no, now's the time to get on, get, 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 get on the rocket platform. Yeah. That's the yeah, people I work with are great. I mean, it's just being, you, you don't want to like my, my advice, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You want to be in a room where everybody's smarter than you and you're going to learn. So, uh, guess what? I found that. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's a, it's an air environment where people love to happy to explain. And then you go like, Hey, could you explain this to me? And you're like, Oh, this is the world's expert on this explaining this thing to me now. Wow. And it's such a culture of helping people and mentoring and whatever that they have there that, uh, I'm like, I want to take advantage of that as much as possible. So I was up there last week and, you know, went out to dinner a couple nights with somebody who I think is without people here in a certain domain and it's just to be able to like hang out and go do stuff with that person is just like awesome how many times have you moved in the last two decades uh twice twice two two and a half i mean one was from apartment one to this other apartment literally within the same building okay uh just to a bigger apartment but yeah i moved from Florida. Yeah, I think I had the I had my floor, condo in Florida, townhouse in Florida, and I moved here. Then I sold the townhouse there, and then I moved here once. So I haven't moved much. So this this would be an upgrade. This is gonna be this is gonna be a, a big uh, a, a big step up in in a few ways. Where would you put your anxiety about all of it? Just the moving um, beyond 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 the opportunity. We understand the the reason why but just just the moving itself like the uh, uh, boots on the ground playing the first person shooter of your life so i live very well uh, use expression below my means and so that and provides a tremendous amount of comfort and security is that knowing that if i want to maintain this lifestyle i can do that kind of forever but you know when you commit yourself, particularly the California real estate market, you know, that all of a sudden means that a big part of my security now gets tied up into a house, et cetera. And so that, that is a thing that's like, Oh, like, like, you know, you know, I'm, I've been a very liquid guy. And so that's, that is sort of a little bit of a factor of, um, Oh, this is going to be a change. Um, there's a couple factors though that make it easier to deal with. So then it's like, it's like, you know, Again, California real estate committing to say, yes, every month I'm going to write you a check for this amount. And coming from a background as a as an author, which is still my primary source of income is from books and stuff, which is very fluctuation. It you know, fluctuates wildly. That's that's something we all can relate to here. And that that that's a little bit terrifying. Um, I've got a good comfort zone and a thing that I'm like, oh, I should be fine. And if I see any, you know, warnings, you know, I got a couple of years I can for me to bail out, but Still, having gone through those cycles, the anxiety, I think the anxiety is good. So, I mean, because I know yeah. it's definitely taken you, taken you a bit, uh, uh, you know, both on your rise as an author and, and, you know, the reason why, you know, you want to be near this office now to, to, to kind of get over that, that hump. Because otherwise, like you said, you can, you know, you were, you were on, you know, a very sustainable path you know, living where you're living and doing what you're doing, because it's not like you're a wild, you know, you're not like renting out a blimp for your birthday kind of guy. <laughs> you are, you are, you are very much within your means kind of dude. Yeah. Is that an option though? I, didn't <laughs> I was about to that. say, now I want to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> I want that blimp. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that, I think that is that, 
having had the creator mindset of like just always being constant like if i have to reset or i have to do whatever i'm able to do that in a position to be able to do that it, it's just sort of different like you know uh you know like but sometimes steps are necessary like for me like the biggest and it's just like you know, Brian, when you got your seven acre schwood, that was huge, huge. Like the biggest thing I ever did was I got my townhouse. You know, that was like a townhouse that's like laughably smaller sort of life change than saying, yeah, I'm going to commit to this thing and the responsibilities of doing that, whatever, because I believe in the path that I'm going on. Um, that's so for me, it's a I've, I've always avoided those hard decisions. You know, uh, you know, I've owned, you know, I'm in my late 40s, I've owned one house my entire life because i just don't like being tied to anything hmm. so that's interesting because uh, uh i i like to be tied to as many things as possible so that uh if any one of them doesn't work out then uh you know well at least there's this that or the other yeah i, I kind of mean like obligation wise i guess you know like uh, for me like it's easier you know, to cut it, and run from. Uh, I yeah, I can't undo. It's hard to un, like. Oh, whoopsie! I'm just gonna move to a different town right now. I don't like it here. Well, but I would say, I mean, like, for for like, Brian, I mean, you own several properties with with the idea being like, all right, well, if one part of town totally goes to goes to crap, uh, uh, hopefully not the entirety of the city is right. is uh, oh, on fire. Hmm. Yeah, I get you. I I guess sort of meant like, but not like oh, I'm just gonna go to New York or something. But yeah. Because I mean, this is this is going to be where you lay your head down. You know, it's it's uh, not just a, an investment property first. It's going to be a house first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope so. Uh, fingers so. crossed. Wacky, wacky. So house yeah, a little terrified but excited. I mean, I like the idea of having like we don't really invite people over because we live in a two bedroom apartment. One is my crowded little office, and so that's a factor of. I guess uh, uh, this is also the first time you're making this kind of life change uh, where, where it's a two key operation and uh, work, working with a partner is a different set of rules uh, as, mm -hmm. as, as uh, anybody who has, you know, uh, gotten engaged or married knows. Yeah. And that's, that's the factor. Cause it's like I said before with like me, it's like, oh, I'm in tech. So being where tech is, is great. You know, she is a, being married to a filmmaker who was involved in the film scene, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's an, you know, Lucas is up there. Coppola went up there. A lot of people went up there to get away from the scene, but it's still, and it's a factor. You know, that's the thing. It's one thing. If it were me, you know, it would have been an easy, like, Hey everybody, it's moving. Oh, there's nobody here for me to say that to. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I came out to LA literally on a phone call, like, Hey, uh, you need to get out here. Well, is, did the network commit? No, but trust me, you need to get out here. And I'm like, I'll take a chance on that. And went out there and, you know, rented a room from uh, friends of ours and, you know, got ready and then got an apartment and still had my townhouse, like literally bought all new stuff out here because we went into production on a TV show and did not have time to move anything. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, then, and then I describe it as... Yeah, and then uh, then I had uh, you know video cameras at my townhouse in Florida, and every hurricane I could just watch it whirl in in the most expensive and horrible streaming service ever. <laughs> <laughs> Top recommendations for you, Ding Dong Ditch. <laughs> Yeah, no, don't recommend this one. You so, know. so uh, uh, you know, Eliza, <laughs> what's the advice to any version of us twenty years younger in this? Is 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 uh, f that? What's the advice to me? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it, it sounds like a good move, and and you know you uh, certainly have flexibility not just with with this gig, but with the writing gig, which you can yeah probably do you know wherever. Um, you know, the misses, you probably might have to figure something out or, or compromise something, but uh, it sounds like that, that, that she's into it. And so I don't know, I'm excited about this because I know that you have been very excited about the AI gig um, and that uh, this only means more of that. Yeah. Um, at a very, a very opportune time uh, when John Oliver spends 10 minutes just looking at. Uh, AI generated images this week. That's all the segment was. Just 
John Oliver as a puppet. And played the clip with the clip from the video I made, which was funny. That's so. right. Oh, wow. Um, and so it's like, yeah, man, like, uh, go for it. There's, I'm, yeah, I'm there's, excited there, for there's it. a moment. That, all right, here. So here's the real, the real work. Uh, SF people don't want to come to the East Bay. I think they think it's haunted. I don't know why. Even if it's on BART, oh. even even past Uber, I just just get just oh. get used to it. It's it's annoying and it's stupid. I, Make day plans. I, I, That's the only way they I come out. It. I did a kite rental. Well, again, it's over the hill, so it's different. Uh, did a, a kite rental. And I had to drop, you know, that's kites where they bring the rental car to you and then you oh. drop it off and they, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't pick it up for me at JSX. Like, oh, we have a, we have a facility near the, Oak, we have a drop off point near the Oakland airport. I'm like, okay, cool. It's actually near the Coliseum. It's oh, actually Jesus. near, oh yeah, there is no place to park. It's literally just sit there and wait for some dude to hop off the park and come meet you at your car. So we go up there and like, where is it? Like, oh, I literally got to wait for some dude here. So we go make a U-turn. Being this part of Oakland that it is not the most well-maintained, feel something funky on my tire and get a flat tire <laughs> and have to find a place to pull into between mattresses and stuff. And there's Watch My Tire Deflate in the a uh, a town that could use a lot of love. A part of town that could use a lot of love. Oh, And God, a lot of by, people who could have used some love. By the and airport. Jesus. So, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. And they're like, oh, guess what? We got a plane to catch over at the executive part of the airport. And they're like, yeah, your your kite surfer is delayed. And there we are with a flat tire in that part of town. And tell me more why. I mean, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not even, I'll tell you this much. You got the lingo down. You sound like a native already. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not even talking about those elements. Of ugly. Like, like there, there, there are some uh, very charming parts of 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 uh, uh, the Oakland Berkeley area, Alameda. There are some like very beautiful places for which are easily accessible. And yet, I don't know what it is. The SF people they want to stay in their own little. I mean, it's not like that place is, you know. Scrub to perfection. Yeah, but you Go know, tell him. You, you tell him, Justin. You, get you know the crazy into him, buddy. You know you recognize the crazies there. That's why. Mm, they're not the, they're not the crazies between SF and Oakland. In SF, you kind of know you have your little. Oh yeah, it's that guy who's always no. there by there. You, you know. It's, it's anyway. Look, oh I, I'm, all I'm all I'm saying is that the <laughs> local SF people beef, local beef between a man who's not in San Francisco anymore and has not moved to San Francisco yet. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no. Look, the, the SF people are entitled. I don't like them. I, I I like the Oakland people better. I don't know why the SF people they they think everything is better. It's not. It's the same stuff, and we have Lake Merritt, so eat it. It's also warmer. It's a better place to be. East Bay for life. When you're the Except east, for the fact that you the left east. the east bay. I also left the east bay. It's fine. It was too expensive. I couldn't afford a house. <laughs> I could afford a house if uh, you know. Maybe maybe it'd be different. But my uh, pick is the rehearsal on HBO. I'm only six episodes in. There are what eight? There's only six up ep- again. You think you watched all. all of it? <sighs> then then I'm <laughs> unpicking like it. it. I didn't like it. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, you didn't like it. If, if there's another episode, then I'll like it. But there's not. There's only rumor six. was you were fooled. No, I was never fooled. Oh, not fooled. Not fooled. You want to know you what? Right by the it was all stuff. written. You want to know what? Oh. What? I wasn't fooled either. You were not. No. Okay. No, dude. I not, watched the first. I watched not the fooled club. I watched, I watched the first episode. Funny, interesting. I liked it. Uh, uh, I have some theories on how they got the vibe that they got. Uh, but I, 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 I don't know whether it, I, I, I don't know whether it's the best decision or the worst decision. I can understand why the, the reviews were polarized on it because I can, I can understand why. Okay. So spoiler territory, vibe. what I'm guessing spoiler, it's all staged. I see. Here's my thing is I, th- I, I, I don't think so. Uh, and I don't think that that is the m- most interesting thing conversation you can have about this show i haven't seen anything of it i've never watched more than two minutes of nathan fielder and i go oh that's an interesting character he plays and that's it the i mean aside from the fact that it's non-violent sociopath inception like uh uh it is it is interesting in that capacity uh i think it is an interesting show it is a deconstruction of 
the reality of reality television, mm. uh, I think it is more complicated uh, uh, than I think just it being scripted. I think that there are probably there are techniques for which they use to make it feel off kilter. Uh, uh, but boy, does it hit all the comedic beats that it needs to, and it does not do any of like very minimal of the things that you would do in a reality show to demonstrate visually that this is a reality show uh, or a documentary, which is funny because we've seen so many of those reality shows and documentaries that you would think that they would include a few of the things like, like, like the, the, the documentary trope of the person being like fitted for a microphone and, and getting the like back and forth with, with, with the documentary. None of that runs like a sitcom shoots like a sitcom. Uh, uh, but it's fascinating. Nathan Fielder is, uh, he is making television for which I have not seen before, whether or not, I mean, the, the fact that we want to debate it, I think is, is uh, the reason why it's worthwhile. Yeah. Also, I'm not fooled. So if you think <laughs> I was fooled, then you're wrong. Yeah. It's that. not fooled. Hashtag not fooled. Not I, fooled I clicked to like, I, I'm getting like a, sh I'm getting like a Synecdoche, New York, you know, the Charlie Kaufman film vibe of like, what if I really try to pull this off with a production? <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, it is as much a de deconstruction of the Nathan Fielder aesthetic as it is anything else. And his madness spreading theatrically. It's 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 just it's very impressive the lengths that they went to for the ideas on the show. Very expensive show. I I mean yeah, I mean that I don't know. There's there's a bunch of stuff while I was watching it that I wanted to be like okay, well there's a lot of things that you can check on and and I'm sure that there's a subreddit that find that has found every person who's involved in the show and exactly how much they spent on it and exactly how impressive those sets really were. Uh, but I don't know. I almost don't want to look it up because I feel like that's kind of the fun part of it, that it should exist in a little Skinner box of, you know, I don't know. I got my guesses. I got my guesses as to how much was what it was and how much was what it wasn't. Would it shock me that they didn't fully recreate that bar and instead built a a facade and then shot in the bar to make it look like they had recreated it perfectly? Like, no, I would not be shocked if that were the case. Uh, and maybe it isn't as expensive as we might think it was, but I don't want to find out because I, I, I like it either way. Not fool. But I'm also not fooled. Man, look, what you got to understand is I'm really, I'm really smart here, Bryce. Yeah. And unlike you, you dummy, you right, bought right. this thing hook, line, Bryce, and sinker. Bryce, what do you have to recommend? Yeah. Um, uh, 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 oh, I get a pick. Uh, I played this over the weekend, uh, Slime Rancher. Uh, this is a very popular, <laughs> very well-known game. Um, I, not going not gonna to rattle any cages <laughs> like Nathan Fielder does, but... Uh, if you want to have a farm where little slime people, um, you should have just audible to like the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> you should have just said, "I." And, yeah. and it gone off about how you're not fooled by it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big dummy. <laughs> no, no, no. You're a slime rancher. That's what you are. I'm just a how slime good is rancher. slime ranching? It's you know what? It's a uh, uh, it it's. Uh, it's a quaint game. It's a very like comfortable, easy game. There's a casual mode, so you don't have to. Uh, uh, you know, worry too much about fighting and things, but it's where you hire, uh, shall we call them helpers to help you run your slime ranch? The, you know, I haven't gotten to any sort of automation parts of the game yet, so I, I am w curious about it. But yeah, you know, there's you're in a little alien world. There's slimes, and you go and uh, suck them up. You get a little vacuum thing, and you keep them and you feed them, and they make. Plorts, which are these crystal poops. Sorry, say it again. A plorts. Wow. One more time. A plorts. Got you. Go ahead. And you sell them on the the space stock market. Mm. But the the prices change every day. But you gotta watch out for slime trichinosis as you. That's right. Put them down the slime. As you're, as you're as you're as you're as you're handling your plorts. As you right. There's the evil. Well, because the, the evil slimes are called uh, inks, 
and and they turn bad if you feed them when you feed them something wrong and they turn into that gotcha. but anyway slime rancher it's right uh, have you have you played the uh, cult of the lamb uh i've i've seen about that I, I, no i have not played that yet ash is really into it that's that a, is that is my that is my my uh uh, uh my window into non hardstone gaming <laughs> is what Ashley is playing, and uh, uh, boy, she's really into Cult of the Lamb. And it seems like it's a uh, what was that game? That old game? Uh, it was like Populous. Like oh yeah, pre, a pre god? Sim City. Yeah, yeah. Or black and white. Maybe? Or uh, black and white. Another god game. Yeah. So it's it's uh, uh, think that, but with a cult, and so you're you're similarly. Kind of in that, but then also has these kind of uh, uh, top-down hack and slash missions to get the stuff that you need to keep your cult happy. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind. So, of, so you're L. Ron Hubbard with an axe. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but you, yeah, you like you like go down into the pit of whatever version of hell that you are servicing, and you de- defeat these demons, and then you bring this magical resources back to your village, and you 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 sacrifice people and you marry people and you do a bunch of culty stuff uh but she seems to be having a having a blast with it which is probably troublesome yeah it's a it's a popular game right now because oh. you yeah because you have that town building yeah, meets I, like binding of isaac sort of roguelike gaming yeah i don't want to stereotype here but i've noticed a trend in my friends wives a lot of murder podcasts a lot of or like women maybe getting the upper hand and knowing how to get away with murder yeah we might be losing the murder gap. Might be closing. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna break through the glass. Uh, so I'm gonna Feeling. now the I got glass the glass body bag. Ah, there, ah, there, there we go. Yes. Yeah, I don't. Know. I'm just, 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 it was just an observation. Like I'll go in there. She's watching something else on this. Then I'm like, should I be worried? And everybody's like, oh yeah, it's the same thing. Like this is just. Yeah. Concerning. I just love it. Oh, I just, I just like the color red. <laughs> I just like Brian. The color red. Is 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 Bonnie into the murder? Uh. I don't think so, but I can't know for sure because I at one point said, oh, holding up the newspaper, uh, uh, looking at my Mm -hmm. my eggs and bacon, pulling down my reader glasses. Ah, this article here says couples can merge their audible libraries. (laughs) Maybe you and I should know. No, we shouldn't. Hard pass. Hard. uh, Nope. We're fine. Well, I mean, it's just uh, there are some books that I like that are in your uh, like. Yeah, never going to happen. Yeah. Never going to happen. Move on. <laughs> Next topic. Hmm. Well, the crossword is a I say you do a pro. <laughs> hey, uh, I heard couples can merge their Google search histories to get better hmm. results. Which would you rather do, do? Would you rather merge your histories or just completely delete yours? Delete it. Oh, I, I mean, with my, I have no secrets. I have, yeah. Uh, other than the ones I'm paid to keep. I was uh, going to say, yeah, I, I have no secrets either, right? I, we all have no secrets, <laughs> but I'd be deleting it. It would be deleted. <laughs> just in case I couldn't remember if I had just a, completely a little, little you know, secret so, uh, that maybe so, so, I forgot. Some, sometimes, yeah. you know, you're, you're shooting a bit and a, a wacky jape and somebody says, hey, let me borrow your phone. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Who knows how those things get on there? I'm just going to. Yeah. Hey, you tr- hey, look, if you trust me, then I'm going to make you trust me. <laughs> I'm going to make you trust I'm me. New single trust. from that, Bryce that, that's something that, that a very <laughs> healthy partner <laughs> says. I'm going to make you gonna trust make me. You. <laughs> I'm going to make you say I trust you. A lot more threatening. I like want you to trust <laughs> me. <laughs> you have no choice but to give me your trust. I just, I just now listen cold. up <laughs> or it's back in the cage for you. <laughs> You're going to trust me with all your love it's true that's why we are sharing audible and google search histories get back in the cage please that was i'm going, going to make into you <laughs> my private browser mode <laughs> <laughs> that was i'm going to make you trust me by bryce neshkam castillo oh, no. up Long next course. on movie tunes <laughs> <laughs> 
TNT takes us behind their necks. Yeah. Yeah. Maria <laughs> Menounos takes us behind the scenes <laughs> of Rise of Gru. Co-sign this low. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Now we're now we're we're in we're in a we're in a very specific window. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Yeah, it's been after. <laughs> it sure has. <laughs> it's been legal. Goodness, I hope it has been. <laughs> I hope it has been. All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for listening to Weird Things and After Things. We're gonna come mm-hmm. back with Cord Killers. If you were fooled or not, by the way, it was a pleasure doing it. Either way, regardless if you're fooled or not. We're going to have a... Uh, well, we know our title. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to have Chris Mancini on Court I, I think it. I think it's unfair to have a mandate on whether or not you're allowed to go to school if you were fooled by uh, uh, the rehearsal. I think it's unfair. Coming up in a couple of hours. Fooled or unfooled, it's fine. You should have the choice to be fooled or unfooled. Justin R. Young on Twitch. Yeah, it's me. Andrew Main on Twitter. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody. Have a good uh, rest of your day. Yo! Ah! Sam!